It's always an honor to have the missionaries that we support here with us to bring us up to date on what God is doing in their lives. And this is just a dear couple who love the Lord, who love Jesus, who love children, um, who want so very much to trust and obey. And so I'm just so happy to have them here with us this morning. Um, and there, Rebecca's going to bring you up to date a little bit for those of you who don't really know their story, how they got to be here, and then talk to you about some major changes that God is bringing about in their ministry. So please come. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord, for these faithful servants of yours, and I just pray that the words of their mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts would be found acceptable in your sight. Uh, we come as an act of worship to you. They speak as an act of worship. We listen as an act of worship to you. We pray this together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning. It is indeed a pleasure for us to be here. I'm going to take a quick drink. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, yes, for those of you, um, we kind of pop up every so often, so we'll just bring you up to date just a little bit. Um, we first began a relationship with um, Upper Path Valley. I was working um, as a, what they call a field worker with Child Evangelism Fellowship of uh, Franklin and Fulton Counties. They are the people that do the release time here on Thursday, so I had been up teaching and Occasionally, you know, I'd uh, run into Megan and we would chit-chat and whatnot. And uh, then a couple years after we were married, uh, we decided to take a new step in ministry, which was to um, be trained and raise support to work with CEF in uh, Puerto Rico. So a lot of you may uh, remember that. We came and shared testimony and kind of projects. So the Lord is faithful. He provided a wonderful team um, of people who have just held us up and pushed us forward, and uh, we're really thankful, honestly, going through everything that we went through, just to have those people and those friends, um, that is so worth it. Uh, but anyways, um, we did get to Puerto Rico, but unfortunately, I'll say unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, the Lord knows what he's doing. Um, due to some circumstances beyond our control, we were moved back to Pennsylvania, and uh, we are, are serving with Child Evangelism Fellowship just a little bit north of here uh, with Mifflin, Juniata, and Perry counties. Um, however, we have just had the burning desire in our heart to get back to where we know we work best as a couple, where we felt a call, especially since getting married, and that is working with children in Latin America. Um, we work well in Spanish together, and we just have a burden for children um, in Spanish-speaking countries to know Jesus as Savior. So, uh, with that being said, here the end of July, this month, <laughs> the end of this month, we are actually going to be stepping out of CEF completely, and uh, we're going to be sent by our home church to Argentina, which Matias is very excited about. I'm also excited. Um, but uh, we'll be going to close to where Matias uh, was born and grew up, and we'll be working with children in specific neighborhoods um, that do not have an easily accessible Christian church. Um, if you go to Ar Argentina, a lot of their cities are very spread out, and um, unless you're a child with a parent that already goes to church, it can be very difficult for a child even to know, for one thing, that there is a church, and then how to get there and be faithful to go. So uh, what we want to do is we want to reach children, first of all, give them the good news, help them to grow in their faith. We would love to reach their families then as well. And long term, uh, we would love to get some uh, even churches planted in some of these areas that just do not have a Christian witness um, in them. So that's kind of the long term there. Uh, we anticipate, Lord willing, um, being able to leave here by the middle of next year, mainly because there's a lot of turnaround things to do, and whenever you go again to move internationally, um, there's just a lot to make sure you have your ducks in a row before you just go. <laughs> and I didn't mean to rhyme. But um, anyways, uh, we do want to share with you kind of a mix of things. We want to share with you a little bit of personal testimony as to how the Lord has led us on this journey but we also want to share some general things that we hope will be a blessing to you 
because we have a sneaking suspicion that we're not the only people that deal with changes in our lives or that deal with decisions that uh, we need to make. Maybe you're sitting here today and you're saying, well, you know what, yeah, I, I do have that decision maybe in my job or a decision about you know, maybe relocating somewhere or a decision about schooling, either for myself, for my children, uh, maybe about getting married or who to marry uh, or you know, just different things like that. So we would love to talk with you a little bit about how to be sensitive to the Lord's leading and direction in your life. And I'm trying to use the word sensitive because sometimes we say, oh, understand God's will for your life. And sometimes you don't always understand it. You can be sensitive to it, but sometimes you don't understand it, at least right in the moment. Um, but the very first thing that we would like to talk with you and encourage you about is um, really having a consistent intimacy and communion with the Lord. We'd like to read with you uh, two major, I don't want to say major, but two base scriptures that we are going to be talking about, and then we'll also be referencing, just in passing, some other scriptures. Uh, so the first one is um, Psalm 119, 105, probably very familiar. You're probably like, oh yeah, this is the classic, you know, the Lord leads you verse. Um, but it says this, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. And then the second scripture is maybe a little bit less familiar because it comes from the minor prophets. So unless you're real gung-ho in, in Bible study, minor prophets usually don't come up too often. Um, but this is from Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. This is Habakkuk speaking. He says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that reads it. Just as an aside, um, if you look at that in other translations, what that means is that the person that sees it, that sees what the Lord is saying to them, can walk in that way. Um, continue with verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So the very first thing that we want to encourage you with is if you're facing a desire for the Lord's guidance and direction in your life is to have a basis of communion with the Lord. What does this mean? Well, this might sound kind of like Sunday school answers, but we are in church. It's time to think about this stuff together. Um, First of all, be intentional in being in the Word of God. That looks different for different people. Some people are really good with just diving in, you know, with the raw scriptures and reading things and just pulling things out of it, going to commentaries, journaling. Some people work better with um, studies that are already compiled or, or Bible study books or series and things like that. Uh, maybe you learn best whenever you're collaborating with other people and you need to come to Bible study. So see, see Megan for when that is. Um, but yeah, come to Bible study and study the Bible together. Um, also, something great is to be in prayer and in persistent prayer. Whenever you need the Lord's direction for something, ask him for it. And then again, and then again, and then again. Be like that widow who was making that judge sick and tired of seeing her. So he finally said, okay, <laughs> I'll let you have what you want. Come and be persistent in prayer. But then also have the humility at that time to wait and to listen and to see what the Lord brings to you. Because sometimes you say, okay, Lord, I know what I want, and it's going to be like this, and it's going to be like that, and everything will be fine. And then the Lord brings something else. You're like, well, that was not what I was expecting. So again, remember, be persistent in prayer, but also be humble to receive the response. Also be in community. Be in regular community, which you are doing today, so good job. Um, but be in regular community on Sundays. Find ways to help out, uh, to give back to your church community. Um, I know there were some announcements about that there was need for help. When you're serving, you're being active, you're being obedient in um, your fellowship with your church community. So be here because um, the church leadership here is here to help you grow in knowing the Lord 
personally, not just up here, but here, and then living it out. Um, and then finally, if you're facing a big thing in your life, one thing you may want to consider is doing what we would call a spiritual retreat. Now, again, I'm not saying, okay, you've got to, you know, uproot yourself and, you know, go out to the wilderness for a week or something. Even just taking a few hours one day, changing up your scenery a little bit, maybe going to a park or going out, a place where you can sit, be by yourself for a couple hours, get a babysitter or something. Um, take time, read scriptures, be in prayer, and then also be thinking about and be willing to sit still and see what does the Lord bring to your mind? What does the Lord bring up in your heart? And see where that may be guiding you, how you can be sensitive to how the Lord leads you in that way. So we want to encourage you in that. And we also want to um, let you know that as we have been contemplating ministry change, not really ministry change, but location change, I guess I should say, um, we've been in prayer. We've been consulting. Uh, we've been, and again, we're not trying to set ourselves up as like the standard because we fall short daily probably. Um, but just to say, whenever you're looking for the Lord's leading, to be sensitive, to know his voice, you need to be talking with him. You need to be um, listening to him. So benefits from this, like I said, your ears will be tuned to the voice of the Lord spiritually. Uh, we just want to bring out the brief example of Saul before he was Paul. You know, whenever he was knocked off his horse and blinded by that bright light, he knew something was talking to him. But he didn't know the voice of the Lord. Even though he followed the Lord on the outside, he didn't have that personal relationship with the Lord that let him know, oh, that's the Lord talking to me. He said, who are you? In contrast, Ananias, who would be receiving Paul or Saul in Damascus, as soon as the Lord came to let him know that Saul was coming, he immediately said, Lord, here am I. He didn't, you know, hem and haw and say, who is this? Is this really? He knew the Lord's voice. Another thing, you will understand what the general will of the Lord is. If you're waiting for something to happen, you'll still know, you know what? Even though I'm waiting to know what to do in this big decision, I can still know what the Lord wants me to do while I'm waiting. I can still know that the Lord wants me to share his love with others. I can still know that the Lord wants me to glorify him wherever I am. So you can still be busy in the waiting because you know what the Lord's will is for every believer in general. Now I want to encourage you, with Psalm 25, 14. It says this, the Lord confides, almost like saying the Lord trusts, the Lord gives to those who fear him. Okay, so those who are coming to him and having a relationship with him. He makes his covenant, his promises known to them. The Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. Uh, that's an, uh, another reference in the Bible in, in the New Testament. But he rewards those who seek him. So first of all, whenever you have a change or a decision or you're just even looking for some direction, you know, you're at a place where you say, hey, I need to know what to do. I just have no idea. The best basis is to have a regular, consistent time with the Lord, fellowship with the Lord. And then you can also ask the Lord for wisdom to understand specific visions or purposes for your life. Matthias is going to share a little bit about a passage that really speaks to him um, at this time. If you have your Bible in opening Jeremiah 18 2, he's talking about uh, the Lord talking with Jeremiah and saying, hey, I have something for you. It's really specific. It's, it's really nice to me and I'm really surprised how uh, such a short verse in the Bible can tell you something really nice and say, uh, Jeremiah 18, 2, say, go down to the poor house and there I will give you my message. We can see here two parts. One thing saying, go down to the poor house. And I, sometimes I think about it, what if Jeremiah never obeyed that? Probably he never will saw that situation right there with the porter working, in, you know, in, uh, right there. So we can see here a very important step is obeying the Lord. 
And sometimes I hear, you know, people saying, I will probably translate this verse for today, and I will say, uh, go to the church Sunday morning, and I will give you my message. And some people know you, obviously, say, no, I will sleep. I will turn on the TV and watch TV all the morning. But sometimes, you know, that is not the word, the, the way the Lord speaks to us. You know, sometimes we have to obey something. Uh, today we can say, well, um, I don't want to um, obey. I want to do whatever I want. Well, that is the consequence. You're going to be see soon the consequence of that. But it's important because working and obeying, for, uh, obeying the Lord is the way how the Lord show us the next step. The, the vision. If you are in, uh, well, some people say, well, I will keep in my house. You know, it's hot outside. I will turn on the air condition. I will step, uh, spend all the day long here, and I will hear the message of the Lord. Mm, it's pretty hard, pretty hard. But if you obey the Lord, and you go into the poorer house, probably the poorer house for you is, hey, go in and help to these people need to, you know, make uh, new houses. Uh, probably going to some place and you obey, right there the Lord have a special message for you. So it's, uh, it's the way we can understand the, the will of the Lord. Moving to the um, New Testament, because we're specifically in this, um, in this little section of what we're sharing with you, is talking about how the Lord shares things with us. Uh, this is Acts 16. I almost want to say 1631 because that's a verse I use a lot with the kids. But um, it's actually Hebrews 16, 6 through 10. And this has to do with the Macedonian call that now Paul <laughs> has had. And um, a lot of us, you know, focus on that and say, oh, yes, the man from Macedonia called and Paul was able to go and they preached the gospel. Yes. But before that happened... Um, they went through some interesting times. So let me read this to you. It says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept or stopped by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us! After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So you see, there was something very specific that happened. But again, Paul wasn't just like, Okay, well, you know, we couldn't enter into um, Asia, so I'm just going to sit here and I'm not going to do anything else. Paul and his companions were active. They kept looking. They kept saying, okay, well, if we can't go there, well, let's go here. Okay, well, no, that door wasn't open. Let's go here. And as they did that, I'm sure there was, at least the way the Bible tells it, maybe, you know, I know there's a lot more that is not recorded in the Bible, but they may have said, hey, you know, Lord, why is this door closed? Don't the people in Asia, don't they need you too? You know, don't the people in Bithynia need you? But God had a specific thing that he wanted them to do, so he closed those doors. I don't know how he did it. I don't know what that exactly means. It's a little mysterious to us. But we do know that after um, all of that wandering, and we know that that was part of the Lord's plan as well. Sometimes we think, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just all over the place and just have no idea. And sometimes from the outside, it can look like that. I mean, I know we've had some uh, comments with our own personal journey here, like, what is wrong with you guys? You know, can't you just find a place and stay? <laughs> but, um, you know, one thing, too, is understanding when the Lord gives you a vision and a call, sometimes there will be detours, or sometimes there will be, you know, little breaks or little stops. But whenever you keep that goal in mind, whatever that goal is, whether it's for us, you know, sharing the gospel with children, in a context that we function well in, which is in Spanish language ministry, having that burden, continuing, even though for a while we've been back in Pennsylvania, continuing to look for that until the Lord says, that's it, that's done, move along. Um, but God can show you things 
even in your daily life, whether it is a vision. I imagine most of us probably don't have those kind of things, but we do have daily things, situations, images, things that pop up and speak to us if we're willing to listen. Um, Matthias wants to share with you um, a specific testimony of some of that calling um, that we have to go to Argentina that has happened to him in this way. Last uh, November, uh, we came here. Uh, I don't know where Megan went, but we came to, you know, <laughs> preach that day. Uh, and I shared the, the, my testimony, how the Lord uh, came to my family and my life. I don't know if you remember, I will try to tell you a little bit. Uh, I grew up in a Catholic family in Argentina. We were um, um, like um, living in a, in a really hard time. Uh, my parents, they, you know, fight, uh, argue every day. Uh, we were pretty close, really, really close to my parents uh, get divorced. But uh, one day my brother and his friend, he went to hunt doves with a slingshot. Slingshot for me and for many millions of children in Argentina is uh, the favorite toy. Is the, the way you, you, you spend the day. And my brother that day, he went, and he went pretty far to the city, and in one moment they start to feel thirsty, you know, with the friend and say, we are pretty far to the city, we had to find somebody who give to us water. They went to a house, and this man gave to them water, and also preached the gospel to them. And that day, my brother received Jesus as his savior. And come back to home, you know, in a pretty house, in a house where, you know, we have different problems. And he told to my mom, and say, Mom, I received Jesus as my Savior, really happy with that. I remember, I still remember that face. And every time after that, obviously, when I be, you know, like a teenager in my 20s and now in my life, every time I see a slingshot, I remember that, that theme, a specific theme, because I say, well, I cannot say this saved my life, but you know, using that theme, my brother received Jesus as his savior, and after that, him, all my family and me, we start to be Christian, became Christian, and now we, follow, we are following the Lord, a family who was pretty close to Brock. A month later, we came here to this church in November. We went to Argentina for celebrate Christmas. Uh, if you know uh, Argentina, Christmas time in Argentina is summer, it's like today. Exactly like you going out is our Christmas day or, or you know, all that days. And one day, one afternoon, I say to my dad, I need your car, please. And I take the car and I drive for two blocks. And in one corner, I saw one boy, about nine, ten year olds, with a slingshot, hunting. And to me, you know, with a really, you know, smile, say, oh, that is cool, you know. 25 years later, people are still using the slingshot. The, the, the children play with that. And in that moment, just what's that? I can say it, just what that? picture right there, you know, looking, say bye, and, and when, we, uh, when I start to, you know, pray in the night and read the Bible, that image, that picture came to my mind again. So we came back to United States and working, and people started to, hey, how was your trip to Argentina? And that picture again in my mind. And in one, time, one, one moment I was talking with other Christian brother. He say, how was Argentina? I say, and that moment is when I start to ask how this picture come into my mind. And in one moment I say, that was me, or that was like my brother. And probably he's going through for the same problem I went through before, you know. Probably his family is pretty, pretty close to, to Brock, or probably they already Brock. Or, or maybe, maybe he has no, no strength neither. And nobody's going to preach the gospel to him. 
And after, you know, that take me a few days. It was no ambition for, you know, five seconds and I'm ready. I changed my mind. No, that take me a few, few weeks. And in one moment, the Lord touched my heart and said, that children close to your house, they need the Lord. And you are now about 7,000 miles from them. So we start to pray, obviously. And this is the way how the Lord showed me, you know. I, I didn't hear nothing. I, you know, going to sleep and in a dream the Lord showed me something. No, it was just something happened one day and later a little bit every day, every day, every night, every time going to church, that picture. And it's how I understood the Lord is calling us to go and to preach the gospel to Argentina. Just in my city, we have 25,000 children, probably 500 going to church. So we have more than 24,000 children, they need the Lord. So maybe you're saying, well, yeah, I don't get any visions like the people in the Bible do, but maybe things are coming up in your life as you read the Bible, as you're praying, as, as daily things come on and something just keeps coming back and coming back. Take that and ask the Lord, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? Lord, do you want me to be, be, to be sensitive to something? And if so, the last thing we're going to be speaking about is having the courage to obey. Also in the New Testament, in Revelation chapter 3, um, the Lord is talking to different churches. And he's speaking to the church in Philadelphia when he um, speaks in verse 7 and 8. It says, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David, what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. And then he says later in verse 8, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. You know, whenever the Lord opens doors for you and gives you those nudges to go through, go through. Even if the way is hard, as long as that door is open, go through. But if the Lord closes a door, even as much as you might bang against it and try to open it back up or try to find a way around it, you know, it's not going to be a time of blessing. But whenever you um, are obedient to that calling and whenever you're sensitive to that leading, you will go from joy to joy. I mean, your outside circumstances might be difficult or they might not make sense to everybody or even to you. But when you know what you need to do, do it. Because you will find as you walk with the Lord through these different twists and turns or sometimes straight and narrow ways, you will find that the Lord is good and you will find that he's better than you ever could have imagined. So remember, like we said with our last uh, part that we read in Habakkuk, the just, the righteous, the people who are pleasing to the Lord live by faith. So two questions as we finish out here. First of all, to know the voice of the Lord, to know his leading, you need to know the Lord. If you have any doubts about whether you know the Lord personally, um, I'm sure you could, even at the end of this service, come talk to Megan or to Lori or to any of the elders or leadership team. They would love to talk with you. We'd even love to talk with you if you'd like. Um, but if you do know Jesus as your Savior, you have a personal relationship with the Lord, is there something the Lord is asking you to do? Or is he even just saying, hey, that big decision you're facing, come to me first. So I'm going to pray here that we will have the courage to obey whatever the Lord is leading, if you'll join me in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for this congregation. I thank you for their faithfulness in coming out to church on a summer Sunday morning. Lord, I thank you for um, their faithfulness in serving and growing together. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us as your children to be sensitive to your leading. And Lord, to come to you first, not to look to our own wisdom, not to look to our own understanding, that we would come to you. And then whenever you tell us what we need to do, give us the courage to obey, even if we don't always understand. Help us to trust you and to see how good you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.